Um, hello, welcome to Polo Tricky. My name is T.D. Madia. I've been saying to you, this is a month where I want to look at particular women. I want to celebrate particular women. I think the Women's 1956 March is something we should never, ever, ever forget. We stand on the shoulders of giants. And so, yeah. I'm continuing with those conversations. This week, I'm joined now by Dr. Nkosazana Zamini Zuma. She is the Minister in the Presidency for Women, Persons with Disabilities, and there's something I'm forgetting. Youth. And yeah, how do I forget youth? <laughs> <laughs> and youth. Thank you so much for your time, Minister. Women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Oh, that's that how we say it? Yes. Women, youth, youth and, and persons, persons with, with disabilities. disabilities. She's in charge of that ministry. Thank you so much for your time, Ma. The legacy of your work on tobacco remains very strong in the country. So that's a very good example to lean back on. There are questions that people have about you being in the specific department, or rather you serving in President Sol Ramaphosa's cabinet. Some have made remarks that towards the end of last year, you sounded like somebody who had no faith in his capabilities as a leader, yet you take up the opportunity to come back and serve under him. Why? This country needs people to serve the country. The people of this country need service. I'm serving the people. Do you regret standing up? Mm. And he has given me that opportunity to serve the people. I'm not serving him. He has appointed me to serve the people. And that's what I'm doing. Do you regret standing up in Parliament last year calling for the report on the Palapala Pala matter to be adopted in Parliament. Do you regret that decision? Why should I regret? It was my decision. And then I want to move now. I don't think there's a reason why you should regret it. I want to move now <laughs> to issues of... Um, no, no, actually, let me stay with that for a little bit. Are there no concerns of repercussions on the ANC's part? There was a period where it said it wanted to, to take action against those who defied the organization in that moment. Because there was a decision, a party line that was due to be followed. Well, ask the people who are leading the ANC who said that. I didn't say it. Are you not worried that there might be repercussions on your end? Well, if you take a decision and you believe that it, it, you are right and your conscience is clear about it, you, you would be willing to take whatever comes. Minister, have you heard of anything called the Moonshot Pact? Moonshot Pact? Moon, moon the moon? Pact. <laughs> the Moonshot Pact. I saw it in the media. What are your thoughts about that? See, hearing parties, opposition parties, wanting to come together. And funny enough, we spoke about the Codessa talks. You took me back to Codessa. They want to have something like a Codessa this week in order to set the country on a different pathway. What are your thoughts? I mean, they have gone all the way to picking Empress Palace, which is where the Codessa talks took place. Well, I come from the governing party. They are called the opposition. <laughs> so they are, they, they are duty. They're doing their job. They are opposing. So we should just try and do the right thing as the governing party. They will always oppose. They will always oppose. It's That's why job. they're called the opposition. It's their job. Are you worried about the ANC's prospects in 2024? Well, of course, every election brings some anxiety about whether you're going to do well or not. And obviously, as the ANC, we should be trying to do our, put our best foot forward in terms of delivering services to the electorate. We should be trying to be real servants of the people so that they could see that we are saving them. And that way, we can ensure that they trust us and they give us another opportunity. Because 
if we show our best foot forward, if we show all of us, all of us who are in positions to serve the people, we show that we are real servants of the people, mm. then we should have the opportunity to, we will have an opportunity to win. Okay, so I am. Mm. For me, it's in our hands. It's our, what we do. Former President Jacob Zuma was given a remission, uh, remittance of sentence uh, a few weeks ago. By and large, to many of us, that was the correct political solution to be taken uh, by the governing party, by the state, if you mean, whichever way you want to put it. That, that actually, no, let me rephrase that question. Uh, <laughs> He was given a, remit a remission, yeah, remittance, no, what are the special remissions, yes, by the president. Um, your thoughts on that? Let me first ask about that, where there's an order for him to return to prison and then he's given special remission. Um, generally, some of us feel that that was the right decision, that a political, though it is a legal issue, a political solution should have been sought. What are your thoughts on that? Should have been, would have been best if we visited that vision, this the first time around in 2021? You know, I don't believe so much in dwelling on something you can't change. Something that has happened, you can't change. But you can change what you do today and tomorrow. And I think the president, the minister of justice did well. This time. <laughs> By, this time? Yes. But this is not a matter that's going to leave us alone because there's still an issue around the arms deal. Do you think they need to apply a similar sense of logic about the future? I don't, I, that's not my space. But I'm just saying they did well. So it's up to them. It's the president, it's the minister of justice. They must look at the matter and deal with it. 